everyone, welcome back. It's me, Jen. This is my channel, Wheels No Heels. It's dedicated to making videos all about my life with a disability, helping others feel less alone. And I talk about that a lot more in my TED talk. So if you haven't seen that already, go and check that out. Um, and I'll also leave it linked down below. This month is September and September marks a Spinal Cord Injury Awareness Month. And if you didn't know, I am in a wheelchair due to the fact that I have a spinal cord injury. I've got lots of videos explaining my spinal cord injury and lots of videos around uh, paralyzed, being paralyzed and things like that. So um, be sure to go and check those out if you haven't already. But today I wanted to talk about um, what it feels like to be in a coma um, because I don't know how many of you out there have been in one um, and I don't know if you are interested in knowing what it's like. So um, if you didn't know, my spinal cord injury was suffered due to lack of oxygen to my spinal cord. Um, and that accounts for about 1% of people who suffer spinal cord injuries. So very, very small. Um, I had um, a narrowing in my aorta. And when I was nine, they needed to cut out the narrowing and stitch it together again. Um, because if they had left it, it was as thin as tissue paper and it was inevitable that it was going to burst. I was a ticking time bomb. The fact that I lived to the age of nine is a freaking miracle because it should have been picked up when I was born, but it wasn't. Ah, so yeah. So off I went and I had my surgery um, and as I was coming round from the anaesthetic, I choked and panicked on the intubated um, breathing tube. Um, and I think, um, I, I think uh, some people have sort of commented before in the past that there is something like um, hysteria and sort of like psychosis um, and someone was saying that their daughter who was two who was coming out of um, anaesthetic was only two and they needed four people to hold her down to calm her down and um, when I was coming out of this I panicked and when I panicked the stitches burst in the aorta so I suffered major internal bleeding and the mortality rate for <laughs> a ruptured aorta is like 90%. Um, so yeah, I'm very lucky um, that I survived. And uh, the only reason I did survive is because at that point, the life-saving surgeon was being called and dragged out from his car in the car park. If he had turned up seconds later than that, or it happened later on in the day and he wasn't there, who knows what would have happened. So the life-saving surgery took place there on intensive care unit. There was no time for anyone to be scrubbed up and taken down to theatre. Every second counted. And I believe I was without oxygen for about 10 minutes or something crazy, like way, way beyond the expectations of being able to survive. And because my body had suffered so much trauma, I was put into a medically induced coma. Now, the word coma actually comes from the Greek deep sleep. And uh, a person can't be woken up from a coma. Um, and their brain is functioning on the lowest level of activity. Uh, the reason I was put in a coma was to help let my body fight and survive and heal. And my temperature was dropped. I was as cold as ice. Now, this happened when I was nine. So it happened a good few years ago. But things stay with you. Um, and I think for these things to have stayed with me this long, and remembered they must have been quite poignant so this i've never ever spoken about so i don't think even my family know about this so and i remember i had like these dreams um and yeah you are there but you're not there and it's like you're in that dream state when you remember your dreams when you wake up that's what it's like and um, I remember seeing a big 
tree but it was all very cartoony and very much like Winnie the Pooh crossed with Beatrice Potter and going through with like these cartoons and being quite peaceful and nice and just like being part of Peter Rabbit and Winnie the Pooh and and that was one of the nice ones but then something else which was very traumatic and I'd be very interested to know what was actually going on in the real world whether I was coming out of the coma or something more traumatic was happening to me um, I was in this game show and I don't know if any of you remember from the 90s Fun House with Pat Sharp and there were two and there were twins on the show and I was in Fun House at the time and there was like a ball pit and it was lots of reds and yellows but I can also remember seeing a nurse and I was hysterical absolutely hysterical screaming didn't know what was going on now this is really interesting the nurse in my dream was my sister's best friend's mum who was a housewife had absolutely nothing to do with nursing at all. I think her fa I think her husband was in the construction industry and never in a million years would you think about her being a nurse. And this time my sister changed schools and lost communication with them completely. Fast forward 24 years <laughs> to when my daughter's being born and guess who is the midwife's assistant? My sister's best friend's mum. What are the chances? I mean that is freaky as isn't it? Like, you know, when you see these people and you think they're never in a million years going to be a nurse and she's there 24 years later as a midwife's assistant while I'm having my C-section. Yeah, and I remembered it when, when I went in to have my daughter. I didn't mention anything, but I thought, that is weird. That is weird. So, let's go back in the game show. And that was very, very traumatic. And I can also see another nurse to the other side of me but I don't know what she was doing. Um, uh, I'm sure there was two people there, but yeah, there was this other one, and yeah, I, that was not nice. That was very, very traumatic. Another thing I remember is like all these weird like pods and things, um, and there were like all these kind of like rainbow colours and babies and weird stuff. I wanted to add that I find it quite hard watching Stranger Things where a little boy gets taken into an upside down parallel universe. I don't know why I find it hard but it's kind of almost like it takes me back into a time when I was in the coma where it was quite dark and it's really hard to describe but I just wanted to share that with you. Um, so there were more peaceful times and there were more traumatic times and I have heard that you know when you know people are in the room that you love and you know and you trust it can be a bit more peaceful and then when things are going on that aren't so nice um, it's a bit more traumatic and that is being displayed in your dream state it's so interesting and so fascinating that is my experience um, that I wanted to share with you um, share with you that my spinal cord injury is an extremely rare case there you have it that yeah, it was quite a difficult video to film, but I hope it was useful, and yeah, if you've got any questions, or you yourself have been in a coma, or you know anyone that's been in a coma and has had any sort of experiences, that would be really interesting to read, and please, if you enjoyed this video, go and check out my Why I Never Dream I'm Disabled in My Dreams, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well, because that is just so fascinating, I just really think that this whole... I mean, we could talk about this hours, couldn't we? Like dreams and what goes on and yeah. I mean, some people say that we are a spiritual being in a physical body and this is just our meat suit. I like that, meat suit. Um, and then we're gonna go off and get new meat suits, which is good, isn't it? You know, if we're suffering with the disabilities here, hopefully we'll get the best of the bunch in another, in another realm. <laughs> I'm sure of that. <laughs> so anyway, 
I'll uh, we'll stop waffling. So that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Um, was something a little bit different. If you have any other sort of spinal cord injury related videos that you would like me to make, then please feel free to drop them down below. Or indeed, if you have any suggestions to videos that you would like me to make in the future, then be feel free to share those down below. I do have lots coming up, so please make sure you stay subscribed. If you are subscribed, make sure to um, click that bell notification so that you're notified as to when I get a new video. Do go over to the community tab. I'm always sort of, you know, getting ideas from you guys and sharing things and chatting about stuff. So yeah, it would be great to hear from you. Um, so yeah thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!